Jamie, I have been obsessed with this noise that you made on one of our last podcasts. That oh my I God, heard. obsessed is a big word. I I listened to it probably 20 times and the laughter never diminished. Did you send it to me? I think I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. I was like, ah! <laughs> Can you put it up a little? I was like, ah! what? Is what? It's like a horn. <laughs> How so did you do it? Even <laughs> I don't think I could ever even repeat that if I tried. Do you have Do you have the video of it or no? Am I, I talking I said, about Bridgerton? Yeah, yeah, obviously. And you were like, oh my god, this guy is. Oh, oh there I am. I was like, ah! what is? <laughs> What What's is more interesting to me is like my after afterwards, like it was like, like, it, do you know what I mean? Like normally when you make a big noise, you like have to take a minute to like get back into your body. And I was just moving on. Like, yeah, like I had just said, you know, I was, like, I was, how are you? It was like a goose. <laughs> it was crazy. And and to think that I get shit for sniffing on this show. Well, and here you are. <laughs> You sounded like you did a line of cocaine or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a clip of Rob uh, that he, he sent me where I'm doing some weird lizard move. He's really ca honing in on our little nuances. Well, you know. He's obsessed with us, dude. He's got the time. God, this guy, all he does is think about us. Well, I, you know, I, I rewatch. <laughs> I probably watched this podcast, and this is probably embarrassing to say, but I don't care. Like, it's only probably been like twice where I was like, oh, I'd like to see the pod. The other times I'm like, I watch it when I'm looking for like things that we talked about that we didn't answer the question. Like a producer, properly, yeah. Or like things like that, like shit, you know, or just like watching it to make sure like, oh, we didn't say we didn't say anything too horrible <laughs> about anybody, maybe, or like, should we is that bad? You know? Yeah, thank you God do a good for job. You, you uh, thank you for all the work the, you do the heavy finish. lifting you do on he the does. show. We really do appreciate he it. He doesn't just have the notebook with the notes. He does the behind the scenes. You know, stuff he's too. got a whole other notebook up here. See, from Jamie, it means a lot. From you, I just, I take it as... Yeah, so it. Why, do, why do I even bother? I take, well, it. you don't until just now. Why do I even bother? At, you know, a year and a half in. But it's, uh, yeah, I just, because I know it's, you know, you, 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 you're you a backhand who would, complimenter. Who would want to compliment a guy who takes the compliments like this? You're a backhand complimenter, What dude. about that was backhanded? It's not about him. It's only about you. So to me, it's about me knowing I gave him the compliment. How he responds to it is not my problem. Yes! God, I love her so much. <laughs> Babe, I love you so. For this entire podcast, I will be I want you to not know. sexually attracted to you. I It's going to be a big change. What am I going to do? It's going to be a big change. That is so please don't go. That is so I mean it's just so I feel you know how when sometimes we talk about stuff and like you, you're like, "Man, I feel like that person is speaking the truth and it and it sits with me." And it's so yeah. when you tell Cassim about how he's living his life wrong. It just makes me so... Imagine complimenting someone and then they don't receive it and they just throw it back at your face. Who like gives that. a shit? There you see. Yeah, see, now she's petting you. This is all I'm you have to I'm do. Getting I'm getting such get... mixed messages I'm... right now. <laughs> this is such a mixed... This is how I parent. You're so fucking annoying. No, and I don't And I give agree. them all the love in the world. Um, I, I made a major thing. I did a major thing yesterday. I... And for those of you that know me, um, I made a living on YouTube.com. Mm. I had f over 500 something videos. I went through and privated almost all of my YouTube library yesterday. Why? It's some. It's it's part of this. Thank Taking you for your power back. Thank you for asking. Well, because people can't change. Well, Jamie, what am that's I going to let you say that and then move on? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, well, you know, I really, I've been mulling it over for years, right? I don't actively upload videos really on YouTube. Um, if anything, I've, I've had more fun on Instagram recently. But yes. I started making YouTube videos when I was in like my early to mid 20s. And I'm 37 now. And so I feel like I just don't, I, while I appreciate everything that I did on YouTube and, and like the type of person I was then and like what I thought was funny, I'm, I've outgrown it and I'm, I'm not, you know, the, the toughest part I have about it is like, I know there are still people out there that really in, enjoyed them, but I, I think that I want to just like the act of privating all that is kind of like letting go of, of it. And yeah, there's just stuff in there that I, A, don't think is funny, 
some of it's super offensive, you know, and I don't <laughs> identify with that. I don't want to be that guy. And uh, yeah, I think it should be, you know, it's my right. They're my videos. And I, and I, you know, I would understand why somebody would be upset, but um, it felt good. It felt like I took a, like a step, you know, forward in, yeah, in something. I, so you had to rewatch all of them. No, 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 no. You can bulk. You can like click on fifty at a time and then click. You private. you would be like, oh, I know that these. I are kept all the ones up that I you know that I that I liked with other people or that ones that other people produced because that's good for them and mm -hmm. all the ones that I you know all the ones I did where I interviewed porn stars which I had a lot of fun doing at the time but I why would you take those down well you just because you were mocking them well there's a little bit of that there's just like some really like off-color stuff that back then was might have been funny to someone but I don't think is funny really like what Jamie I want to private you right now <laughs> Well, that we're Jamie. We're in a society where people can't change and grow. You either are this or you are not. There is a little bit of that. Pressure. I hate this cancel culture. I re there is a little shit. bit of that pressure, but I would never. That's why it took me years to do this because I would never cave into just that. This had to come from like within. I, I don't like it. If somebody yeah. said, "Oh, that shit that you did was offensive and you should be ashamed," my thing is, it was a completely different time. Uh, I had a point of view about it, or I thought that would be funny, and I don't feel that way anymore. So. Look, wait, like Jamie, wait, like Jamie said, like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, give, can you think of something where, when it popped in your head yes, where you were just like, just give us one example? Because, but I, by the way, I support you being like, I don't want this out in the world because yeah. this isn't who I am now. I totally support that, completely. What I don't support is people being upset at you for something you did when maybe we weren't in a more No. A woke I, I took a preemptive world. sort of version of that. I I I've, I've always gotten like people like, "Hey, you should." And I I am sent more sensitive to that stuff now, but this was more of a preemptive right takedown. You know, I had a whole video just to answer your question um where I interviewed a little person uh adult actress, mm -hmm. you know. And there was just a lot of jokes about how she was a little person, you know. I bet yeah. those wouldn't be funny at all today. And uh, look, I some of it, some of it, I can understand what people think are funny. She seemed to like it. She had a great time. We still communicate today occasionally, and um, I'm just thinking of, you know, what I think of is like if I were to have a kid, and in seven years from now, that kid's old enough to do YouTube, even younger kids are on YouTube, and they were to come across dad's old YouTube videos, you know, and been like. Huh, that's daddy feeding um, a small lady a slider burger while he's eating a regular size burger and like he thinks that's like okay, you know. And, like, you're ready to become a daddy. You're thinking you're thinking I do about think your about, I do think a lot about what my what I would want kids if I had them and what I would want them to You're see. graduating from that time of life where you're just like young and it's all about me and you're wanting it to be about more. I I see I, it. I think yeah, I think that's that's a big part of you're it. You're taking the sure. steps. But so, see, the way I look at it is you wouldn't be embarrassed. Like, you're embarrassed because it's a video on YouTube where if it was like a Scorsese movie, you'd be proud of it. Well, because it's not him. Well, that would he'd be playing yeah, a but character. But he wasn't, he was playing a character on the YouTube video. Right. But it's still, it, he was responsible for the content. Yeah. There is a. But, I mean, you're responsible when you're going and acting in a role. That's your responsibility. You're taking. Yeah, but you could say you're playing a role in exposing this type of person as. Yeah. As opposed to him being like, hey, it's Gassum. I don't know if Scorsese you know? would be uh, doing the type of content that I did, but I see what you're, I see what your point is. Um, but even then, you know, if I was the one that was in the Wolf of Wall Street and picked up a dwarf and you know threw it. I think it's a little different because that a that did happen and it was kind of based on a, a real story and you're obviously an actor and you're hired to do the thing. But there would be a part of me that's like, well, I'm the guy that threw the uh, little person in the movie, you know. And so there's a little bit of that thought. But on YouTube, it was a, a lot of it was like, you know, hyper sexual, just just stuff that I, I don't I think I was very much playing a character and playing into what I thought people wanted to see of as course. opposed to what comedically my sensibility is like, I really like satire. I don't feel like, you know, I, I like more subtle nuanced stuff. That's the stuff I watch when I watch comedy. Um, and I want to do 
more of that stuff. You know, you know I hope I'm not going to be speaking out of turn, but like when you're saying that, like you knew that this was the type of stuff your audience was responding to and like you kind of play to that, which be- becomes your business. I feel like that was like a little bit of my father-in-law's thing was mm. that, you know, when I met him and he was like seemingly a very repaired human and, yeah. and, and rehabbed human, um, I think when his book came out, people want nails and they want that guy and he was giving them what they wanted. And then it became this slippery slope that, you know, he unfortunately, I don't think had the wherewithal to, you know, or consciousness to be like, this is also affecting the other people around me. It was like, how do I, this is how I'm going to find my success again. Right. And, And unfortunately, you know, I made him lose a lot totally because of it. But I think that that's, that's that's celebrity very a lot or fame that's a, that's kind yeah. of the tricky part of it a lot of the time is like seeing what people are responding to and being like this is how I'm going to grow and become grow my business and become a bigger celebrity and to me bigger celebrity just means more money as you as if you right. would grow in any business it just happens to have fame along with it um and it's and it's and it takes a lot of courage to step back from that and take that away from you because it doesn't align with who you are totally i i think just from a, like a fiscal point of view i left a lot of money on the table yeah. it, there's a lot of i could go back and probably still make those and like do okay but there's i just wouldn't be happy i wasn't happy generally when i was doing it back then i was i was like uh, pretty depressed for you felt a lot. conflicted about it yeah a little bit i mean there was a time where you know it was like great everything's going well but like there was a time where you know a few times where i was just like i don't know about this uploading this particular video mm. even though i think it, it would do well then you have that you know and it's so funny to be talking about like the artist struggle or whatever on a fucking youtube video because no. it really doesn't mean much that's but what i felt about when i would do like maxim covers well, what'd you feel about that? Let's talk I d- about I that. I hated them. Maybe we'll throw one up right here. I right? didn't we'll like right it, but I thought that I was told and I thought, and we, it was a time where like, if you were sexy, a woman that was viewed as sexy, more more work would come your way. Yeah. I remember I was up for a pretty big movie and I had never been courted for a studio movie and still never happened. Hope it happens one day mm-hmm. like this, like meeting with the executives for mm-hmm. months ahead of time and the writer and being put in touch with the star and like meet and greets, get some chemistry rolling and whatnot. It was almost to the point where like, this is your role to lose. And we had the final screen test and it was a couple of other actresses that were very famous at the time. I was just on Sopranos. These were like movie stars. And I didn't get it, obviously. And I remember my agent calling and he's like, Jamie, it's just because you are not the girl you want to fuck. You're the girl you want to marry. And uh, I, at the time, was like devastated by that is news. Is still your agent? I was, no, I was 21 You're like, oh time. yeah, doot, doot, doot. Hello, Maxim? <laughs> yeah, pretty, but but then when someone like Maxim, each, each time The Sopranos was coming along, they'd be like, we love Jamie on the cover, and being a young and impressionable girl as I was at that time, like, that's what I thought I needed mm-hmm. to be, like, desirable. Yeah. And, that's playing but the game. You're playing. In turn, the yeah. entire time, I was like, I fucking hate that I'm, like, worried, wow. self conscious about my body and sitting in my underwear because that's not who I am, and I'm very... I, and I say this now because I'm in a place where I'm so comfortable with who I am. And I mean, you guys know me. I barely ever make myself up. Like today I was like, I'm giving myself 30 minutes and putting on some makeup because this does go on YouTube. And I would like to show up every once in a while looking like I care about myself. But it's so weird to think about myself then. Yeah. And then where I'm at now. And so and I say that because there is an opportunity to change. But there also are people that, you know, aren't as lucky as me and ha- haven't had maybe the support system I've had or whatever it is allowed me to be this confident in my own skin now that will fall back into whatever it will take yeah. for them to have that taste or that you know feeling of, of people caring and fame again. Right. I, I think it's cool to have gone through that mm-hmm. on, on, in both our situations because then you kind of have the ability to understand that maybe that's not, you're not worth it you don't want to go down that path yeah yeah and it helps you kind of sort of 
figure out where it is you lie on that whole spectrum. Yeah. When I stopped drinking, there was a big part of me that like when I thought about stopping, it wasn't like, oh my God, how am I not going to have this, not to this? It was like, I'm not going to be that guy anymore. Like, how do I go about my life now? Mm. How do I, like, when you saw me out at a club, I was the guy who came up, ran up, hugged you. Ah, this is what we're doing. And people would always see me and be like, like, there were people who I partied with and then I didn't see them for two years and they would see me and be like, dude, you remember that night? That was the craziest night of my life. And I'd be like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, you know, like we went out on a Wednesday night. Like, I don't know. It wasn't that crazy. See, but to me, because I knew you even through all those times, you know, because we were working and you were always sober and always, fine yeah. working, that I, it was almost like you were just the, like, amped up version of yourself because you still had the same, like, love in your heart when you would see me and hug me. It was just much more calmer. Like, you would come over and be like, yay, me, Lee, as opposed to then I'd see you at it and I'd be like, yay! You know what yeah. I mean? But it was the same guy coming towards me. So I, I, I never looked at you as a different person or wondering who are you going to be now without the drinking, but I could understand for people that you really only had a relationship with at night, yes. There were, I mean, those people, I never once showed up to a club not drunk. Already? Yeah. Or, like, if I did, it was because something crazy happened. Like, oh, we were coming from a, you know, a thing where you couldn't drink, and now we're going into the club, and I would take, like, you know, 10 shots in a row just to be like, okay, now I'm good. Like, I never never went from the beginning of the night to the end of the night just sober. Like, anybody who knew me knew me drunk you know like sweating red yelling very sweaty yeah very like amped up and never you know like there was again i never left the club to go until the lights came on unless it was to go to another club or like Mm -hmm. an after hours or this like i was never i never once in you know call it 10 years or more of partying was like i think i'm gonna call it not one, I, not one fucking time. And I'm talking about there was year stretches of me going out every single night. Wow. And never once was I like, eh, you know, like it was always just pedal to the metal. So the when you said that you didn't want to be that person anymore and that you weren't going to go and, and go to the club, do you remember a night, the first time where you were like, what do I do with myself today? Well, and- I... I still had the same friends who were like nightclub people and yeah. this. So like I remember going out and just being five minutes in and being like, this is the worst. So, I hate sober this. going out and just do, trying to get into the same vibe that you were drunk and high, but you couldn't do it. Right. But yeah. the, the thing was, I already had known that because the reason I really started, like I always liked drinking from the first time I ever drank, but it wasn't to like, like, like pedal to the floor but for me to enjoy being inside of a nightclub that's how drunk I had to be Mm -hmm. and there wasn't really in my eyes this is dumb probably now but like in my eyes back then there wasn't anything else for me to do and it was like hey you have a year off Sopranos and it was like well what am I supposed like in my head it was like you're supposed to party and I'm sure I I wanted to and uh, but it wasn't like well you should like I know a lot of people like actors and stuff it'd be like i just got done with work i'm gonna party for a week or a couple days and then it was like all right back to now i'm gonna get healthier now i'm gonna go be in nature and now i'm gonna it was like if we had a year off you would find me doing the same thing sitting in the same that's what you enjoyed though but you know but the crazy thing is i didn't enjoy being in those places unless i was fucked up and i felt like in the lifestyle that I was in of like, you know, where I was when that happened in the beginning was like drinking and smoking weed. And like, where did these people go at night? Like, if you like to drink and smoke weed, where do you go at night? Well, you go to nightclubs. And then it was like, well, I don't have a job. Who else? Who? I can't hang out with people during the day because everybody works or goes to school, all my friends. So it's like I found this group of people who work in nightlife. Yeah, working in nightlife, always down to party, always down to hang. Well, fortunately, you found the good people, though, in well, some, nightlife. Well, some. Some. Okay. I found a lot of people who were not, but it was... But the, you're clo- you, I think the people that you considered your close friends and still are some of your closest friends are the good people well, the from problem, that world. Well, the problem was those were my friends until 4 a.m. And then at 4 a.m. is when I'd have to go find the darker the side of like mm. oh isn't it weird is- there just is it's just a shift in like a person and like a vibration and like who they are because i remember 
got only a handful of times in my whole life in New York did I ever get a taste of that like after after hours crowd. And I just remember being like, I felt like I was the character in the movie that like would walk in and be like, oh my God. Like I just felt like I was the audience perspective of like, I don't belong here. This is crazy. Like not one time was I like, oh, I can hang. I was like, I'm sticking out so bad. And it's, you know, like there was that place, what was it called? Mary, Mary Lou's or Mary, do you remember that like after, after hours place on like the Upper East Side? It was like an old lady that owned it. And it, it went back all the way to like Andy Warhol days where they would go there like late, late, like 4 a.m. and party till like 8 a.m. I don't know that. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I got a taste of it and it's, and I just, I remember feeling like I just wasn't cool enough to hang in there. Cause it does, it just takes a, it just takes a, a whole lot of another part of a person that I just don't possess. Well, that's what's so great about drugs that you talk about all the time. It's like when you do them, your ego goes away. There's no yes. like, am I cool enough to be here? Yes. Is this no? It's just like, this is where I am Yes. right now. And I would, we would just, it was, and I'm talking about like, because normally what we would do is at 4 a.m. leave a club and then it was like go to somebody's apartment. And then what would usually happen is like, Somebody's alarm clock would go off at like 9 a.m. And it was like, oh, we should get out of here because they're like going to be normal now. Like they're getting up to go to work. And then we would start texting people like, where are you? And then you find like there was a place we used to go to that had couches all along the wall. The windows were painted black. And in the middle of the of the room was a punching bag. And that was the only thing. And I remember somebody's house. It was just like, we don't know. We never asked. It was like, hey, come over to the, give the address and you'd show up. And I remember there was a time where I took a girl there who you know. I'm not going to say her name. but Is she, it my friend from high school? No, no, no. Oh. She went to uh, the bathroom and she instantly came back and was like, you have to come with me. And I was like, what? And she's like, you have to like watch the door and make sure nobody comes in. And I was like, no one's coming in. And she's like, please just come with me. So I'm like, fine. I go with her to the, because everyone's doing everything right on the over. Coke, fucking, yeah. whatever's going on is going on right there, like on the couches. And it's different vibes and kind of crazy. And I go in the back. And what happened was the door was off the hinges. And it was like three feet over to the right. And she was like, can you take it yeah. and hold it in front of the doorway so I can pee? And there's not people just walking by watching me. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, and like grab the door. And, and she was not the type of person to bring to a spot like that. Yeah. But it, I didn't know that, you know, it was like. Was there ever a night when you were at one of those places where you're like, uh. There was, uh, there were times where people would bring out like meth and it made me kind of, for some reason made me uncomfortable. I think cause uh, same thing with like heroin when that would come out. Like I just, I always had in my head, like that's you jumping off a cliff. Mm. Like if you do that, yeah. you're gone. And then I remember there was another time where I was in Miami and, uh, we went to like an after hours and another and then we were in someone's car for like a fucking hour and a half just like doing drugs and partying in like the back seat. It was fucking crazy. And all of a sudden we were at some house and there were like guns and we were like jumping in the pool. And I was like, and I remember like oh, what like being okay with everything. And then at one point looking around and being like, oh, this is kind of nuts. Like I feel yeah. like like we might die. And I remember me and my friend, again, I won't say his name, but we went up to somebody and we were like, hey, where are we? Because we had no idea. And they were like, oh, you're in like Fort Lauderdale or whatever. And we we're like, well, we need to get back to uh, Miami. And this wasn't like Uber times, you know, and we're like, how do we get back? And people were just like, what do you mean? Like, just stay here. And like, it, it was fucking crazy. And we got somebody to to drive us wow. back. Wow. I like thinking about. When you when you were talking about making that shift from like regular party to like next level of the party, yeah. I wonder, do you what when you walk into a club, do you automatically clock the guy that is gonna take you to that next level, like some kind of kind of a shifty looking guy? Maybe he's got like an open shirt, you know, some gold chains, and he looks he's got a coke nail, and then you kind of remember. And then you drink and you go about the club, but then you like you want to amp it up, and then you go, oh yeah, there's that guy from earlier. I didn't need to because I was so like ingrained in the lifestyle that I was part of that. that like I was one of those. There. Yeah, you would find each other. I people, would who, and yeah. that's the thing is like there were times more so like what you're saying is when I would travel, mm. and then because in New right. York it's like you know everyone. You know, my favorite thing was there were some clubs that had areas in the back or like these rooms downstairs or this where they, they they would never make you leave. 
So like we party, everything's good, you're, you, things are going crazy, and all of a sudden someone's like, hey, let's go downstairs to the room or whatever, and then you leave there at like noon or one mm-hmm. when like the cleaning crew comes and you're just doing drugs all day, but to say what you're saying is like, yeah, there were times where I would go to a bar somewhere like out of state or whatever, and it's fucking instant, man. Like yeah. I don't know if it was a Sopranos thing or what, but it was like I would find the guy doing coke in 10 minutes. Wow. You just know, you know? Yeah. And also the bartender, some... Sometimes, you know, the bartender kind of, you could, you could just, you pick stuff up. Yeah. You know, we got. It's another world. Well, you know, taking us back to this world where we live, we got to wear masks, you guys. Wear them. Wear them. The, we've got the affordable, reusable, most comfortable, breathable face masks available from Braddock, USA. They are made of premium upcycle t-shirt jersey material, create super soft, eco-friendly face covers that offer protection without being a nuisance to deal with. They are the only masks that we wear. They're handmade in Los Angeles, um, to here to protect our community and our fellow citizens. 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you're not happy, just let them know and they'll make it right. So now when you go check out their website at braddockusa.com, you will see they already have great prices. But for a limited time, they're offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJPants. PJ Again, that's $20 off your entire order up with PJ Pants at B R A D D O C K U S A dot com, Braddock USA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. We don't we don't wear any other masks, the three of us. Nope. It's, it's just... the only mask I wear. And they just came out with a whole bunch of new styles. So Yes. So comfortable. The guys are really nice. They're super loyal to us. We're yes. loyal to them. That's it. They if have you need masks forever. Loyalty. If you need masks, it's Braddock USA. And so going from one hole to the other, let's talk about the butthole mm. because I love when you say it like mm. that. We mm. love Hello Tushy, the future of toileting. Because it's technically been around for centuries, but so expensive and not easy to install necessarily. So with the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0, you can have a bidet. It is an attachment that is stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, very affordable. It attaches to your existing toilet, literally requiring no electricity or additional plumbing. Cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Mm-hmm. So the Hello Tushy bidet kind of pays for itself in a few months. And they have a uh, schmutz shield. I love that. It offers easy cleaning and the knobs are naturally antimicrobial which you need when you're around poo poo and pee pee and stuff and they have a 60 day risk free guarantee and a 12 month warranty and right now our listeners can go to hellotushy.com slash pajama for 10% off plus free shipping get 10% off plus free shipping and get your butt clean at hellotushy.com slash pajama that's hellotushy.com slash pajama oh here we got Jamie Emails? Yeah, read that read that email. Okay. Girl, read that email. I think this is copy pasta. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Dear PJ Bantz crew, big fan of the podcast here. My name is Attila Ada, and I'm from Turkey. Don't know if Kasim still remembers me, but I was a foreign exchange student at his high school. We read we've read this before. No, Jamie wasn't here when we did. Oh, okay. We actually hung out for a bit <laughs> back just in the day. We're, just gonna re- we're gonna read the same email again? Yeah, Jamie's gonna, because everybody wants her to, Cass. Okay. We actually hung out for a bit back in the day. I still remember when some sixth graders stole his Monsters, Inc. backpack from him and forced him to shit in the middle of the schoolyard in front of everyone in order to get it back, which he did, albeit with tears streaming down his rosy cheeks. We were in grade eight back then. Did that really happen? Just keep reading. Yes. He even picked me as his lab partner. I remember that I once came over to his house in order to work with him on a lab project. He gave me a soda that tasted funny, and the next thing I remember is the two of us naked in his basement in front of a camcorder. Mm-hmm. My mouth was duct tape, and he was licking whipped cream off my ass crack and butthole. I didn't really speak English at the time, so I never quite found out what the project was about, but it must have had been something with effects of electrical emissions and climate change since Casim had a car battery hooked to his rectum, and this I was wearing is- an Al Gore mask. This this is one of the videos. Now. This is one of the videos he deleted, Casim, <laughs> from his account. This is a video account. he deleted. Yeah, he had it up on. You could have. You could have seen this a week ago. We must have done a good job though, because we both got an A from Mr. Zimmerman, who Casim had an oddly close relationship with. They had a lot of educational meetings behind the schoolyard dumpsters after school and in broom closets during lunch breaks. Our ways ultimately parted when he was taken away by the feds because he had told some kids in school that he would literally assassinate people to know what Billy Bob Thornton's penis smelled like. All jokes aside, I'm aware that I became victim of involuntary homosexual activities, but hey, who doesn't with this guy, am I right? Nevertheless, I'm glad he turned out the Porsche driving movie star heartthrob he is today. No hard feelings here. Jamie, get well soon. You look very sick. Rob, take it easy. 
you need to explain everything right now. What's happening? That's I just had, there's just a lot about me you don't know. There's a lot about my history you, you haven't asked and bothered to ask me about. I've asked all the time. Well, look, do you think do you think I'm capable of that? I don't think you're capable of the middle paragraph, but did you poo-poo <laughs> in the middle of the schoolyard? No. Okay, yeah, good. I no. was like, Monsters Inc. You wrote too old for that. That's where that's where the first tip off should have been. Okay. Attila <laughs> right. Atta, is that a re- is that not a real name either? Well, what do you got against Mongolians? <laughs> he says he's from Turkey. Uh, so he's a liar. You are a big fat liar, and I didn't like this. What? Well, I got really upset about this that sh- that poo poo in the schoolyard, but I'm glad it was not true. Yeah, this has kind of become um, like podcast copy pasta. It's it's part of the uh, lore of our show now. So. Oh, so people are going to be writing these in a lot, and I, yeah. for me to figure out if they happen or not. Sure. Well, is, is this a new game? It is now. It is now. See that cast? Hey, That's Jamie, did it that. happen? Love it. I Love like to it. Hear it. I am very gullible. All right. Rob, it's been a long time since the Upper East Side. What's up, man? I just stumbled on your podcast and it threw me back to our teenage years. Cool to see you doing well in that world. Just wanted to reach out and I hope everything's going well. You look great, man. I'm sure you heard <laughs> past. I still think about him pretty often and our crazy youth. Like I said, I just wanted to say hi. Hope all is well. I'm still on 78th in York. Holler if you're ever on the block again or if you want to catch up. Peace, brother. This is from Ryan. It is. He was the... When, so we would uh, get like we when we turned a certain age, and it would get really cold out. We would have enough money to rent like a studio to drink in, like a music studio. Yeah. And then we started messing around with like the drums and then and I he remember. played guitar. Oh, and he was a guitar player. But what he said, uh, yeah, our, our friend. Uh, well, I don't want to say his name. We should. Can you bleep out the name? But yeah, we had a, a friend. No, it's okay. A uh, friend passed away and. I told you, it's the fourth person of uh, the people I brought to Sopranos premieres that's who passed right. away. This is one of that's one of them. Yeah, he's the. I think he was the third, and there was another one, uh, like just recently. It's fucking crazy. Man. It's so crazy. Young guy, your age. Yeah, yeah. Or everyone was my age or younger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's Ugh. fucking. Sorry, Robbie. I'm sorry. Did you too. know you knew this before the email? Is no, that no, the first no. Time I, you've heard. This? I saw like right before we did this. Oh. I just saw. Uh, Ryan, uh, that was from Ryan. Yeah, I had heard that he passed away, of course. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, well. You ready to uh, change gears, Jamie? This one's called Girls Slutty Talk, <laughs> so this is a major shift here. Yeah, here we go. Girls Howdy, what? Slutty Girls talk. Slutty Talk. Howdy, po- podcaster Roos. I was just watching your latest episode, and something reminded me of a subject which I think deserves some investigation. Girl slutty talk. Jamie uh, is often somewhat unbecoming when it comes to sex talk, which is fair enough, but this reminded me of an occasion when I once overheard some girls talking when they didn't realize there was a male present. I was in the office of a job agency and was upstairs in a computer completing some tasks. The office girls downstairs had obviously forgotten that I was up the stairs. The upstairs room had an open section. Um, And I was sitting up there and I began hearing them talking about their plans for the evening. It was Friday. The phrases I distinctly remember were, I'm going to get some hard cock up in me and I can't wait to get fucked hard. This went on for a few minutes before one of them heard me typing on the computer. I heard them whispering to each other and then quickly changed the subject. When I finished what I was doing, I walked down and acted like none the wiser. And after the usual formalities, I left the place. Now, these were not your usual slutty girls. These were middle-class office girls in a nice town in England. So it got me thinking that this is probably how most girls talk to each other when there's no dudes around. I can remember exactly what I said to myself when I got outside, but it was something along the lines of, God is great. Have Rob and Kasim had any similar experiences of hearing girls talk unfettered like this? Maybe Jamie can enlighten us as to just what girls talk about behind our backs. To put it mildly, mildly, that experience was an eye-opener. It was the equivalent of being granted access to the fourth dimension. Later, <laughs> dudesters. Jamie, can you... Totally- I, I mean, first of all, he says I'm unbecoming when it comes to sex talk. What does that mean? Maybe he doesn't think you're really... I'm not giving it. I think you're- it means not becoming. Yeah, you ain't coming. I mean, I'm not like... Yeah. He maybe he just doesn't think, you know, you're the chick you want to marry, not fuck. Right. I've never said the phrase, um, what was it? I'm gonna get some hard cock up in me. Nope. You just did. Right fart. Something? Wanna get fucked hard? Nope. Uh I've heard girls Farts I've been around be girlfriends that have been like, I wanna I wanna get my I wanna him to fuck my brains out. Like I've heard things like that, like when a girl just hasn't had sex <laughs> in a while and just like, well, 
think about a guy and be like, yeah. I just need somebody to like. Yeah, what did I say? What else did I say? <laughs> <laughs> I know Kasim's getting. You know what I mean? Like I've heard something like that, but not not as specific as like um, as that. Uh, do, do but who? You, what the fuck do I know? You know? Do you have? Did you have uh, conversations with girls that if we heard, you'd be mortified? No. Really? No. No. Wow. I feel like I am very. Uh, my my kids are facetiming. Should we pick it up? Pick it up. We're talking pick about. Pick them up. We're talking about kids stuff. Hi Jack. Hi Jack. What up? Yeah, you're a guest on the pod. Hi, you're, baby. You're, you're on the podcast, Can you say bro. hi? What do you have to say for the podcast? Say something. This is the first time he's ever quiet? I want mommy. Okay, I'm going to be home soon, okay? I'm almost done. Show okay. show Cutter Kasim right now. Cutter, this is how Kasim podcasts, just so you know. Say you! Say you! All right, bye guys. I'll see you soon. What did I tell you about your husband calling when I'm around? Hmm? Um, What'd I say? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Love to but hear from look, him. No, I don't. I I know I don't talk dirty like that. But who? I don't. Not to say that other. I mean, clearly other women do. But who's your um, horniest friend? And what's her information? Mm. Who's my horniest friend? Well, it's somebody I'm not really friends with anymore. You remember her? And what sort of things would would that what I just say, said before? She'd say I got to get that hard dick. No, she'd say I want him to fuck my brains out or something like that. Well, Why are you looking for dates for any reason, Cass? You guys want to hear something funny? I want to hear what it's like to date right now. I I did something I never thought I'd do. Big moment, guys. I I downloaded uh, a couple dating apps. A couple? Woo! How many? Well, I did all of them, but I'm only currently active on two. You're not accepted to one yet? <laughs> oh. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just look at the buttons on his shirt, Jamie. Let's okay. take a picture from there. So people who don't do know. One, do another one here. Is that is that everywhere, Raya, or is that like a here thing? Or it's like an L.A., New York thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's so snooty, it sounds like. Um, There's a dating app called Raya that you need to be accepted on. I think you also have to be like sponsored and then accepted, right? Is that why you deleted those videos? I didn't have any sponsorships. <laughs> um I, t- I, deleted, I deleted the videos because it was going to hurt my chances of getting on right. I could be your big homie. Uh, look, I'm on uh, Hinge and Bumble are the two that um, I downloaded. And the difference being Bumble is like women women reach out first. Hinge is a more traditional approach, but it's like there's all kinds of fucking prompts and questions that you can answer. Um, I, I thought it would be okay for a couple of reasons. I think everyone during the pandemic has been um, downloading these apps and it's kind of given these apps a a bigger pool of people, right? People that wouldn't normally be on there. The stigma is kind of gone behind like meeting people online. It's kind of right now, it's kind of the only way to To meet meet people. people, Absolutely. Um, You know, unless you've got friends. Why is Gabby crying back there? Oh, Gabby. She's laughing. (laughs) No, she's, she's crying, dude. Gabby, I want to make sure when you're editing this, oh you get a God. nice view, okay? So, yeah. I hide, d- your, hide your toaster, Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I downloaded the apps, and um, I got a, uh, It's kind of nice, but it's also like a giant fucking waste of time in most cases. Why? Most of these conversations that you have with people go nowhere 95 percent of them so said the guy on pajama pants <laughs> well yeah this is a this is a job this is a job um when you're on these apps it's it's like a uh a, a lot of what you've echoed and what you don't like about dating is like the small talk a lot of small talk a but lot that's part of like being in a relationship though uh, yeah but you're in like 12 or 15 at one time you know oh. so it's a lot of like the yeah, same dude, the, conversation. Man, this rain coming, huh? Like, what are you planning on right. doing? Like, oof, wow, oh, man, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. You gonna get that vaccine? Like, there's just, it's all the same. It's the same thing over yeah. and over and over. And every once in a while, you get one that stands out. 
couple things I've noticed is the profile pictures in, what, in which people use. You would think every girl is an expert mountain climber or hiker because they've all they all have a picture of them what, hiking in this what, with a view same exactly yeah it's them in their lululemons on top of a mountain uh what does that say i'm i'm active i'm i get out there i i know for the fact i'm out for an adventure totally i would love to get the i like numbers. to hear my own voice <laughs> yeah the amount of people that are actually going on um, hikes per week. You think you know? they just go up for their profile pic? It's just that you know. There's a formula. I think a girl's got to. You've got to start with a face, right? A nice shot of your face. Then you go into some sort of like, here's a figure picture of my figure, my body. Here's one of be being active, and here's one me with my family. You know. So the and then a dog, right? So you see, right. of uh, or you know, a pet. There's that. Those combinations over and over and over. And so what I found was you really have to limit the amount of time that you are on the app because it can, uh, I've really kind of got sucked into it and- It'll suck you dry? It'll, well, that's the that's the point is I'm trying to get sucked dry. And... Your shirt is completely unbuttoned right now. <laughs> yeah. This whole thing. You know what I sometimes well, wonder? Not, this is I have, crazy. still got one button left. So I have z obviously zero interest in ever dating anyone. Like I am very much in love with my I husband. thought you were gonna say of seeing Kasim with his shirt unbuttoned. That too. <laughs> Come on guys. But I sometimes wonder like, how would I do on the dating scene? I had that I'm same serious. wonder. I'm serious. Jamie. How would I do? You'd, I'm really, I'm do really great, curious. But, but you're I'm, also uh, a, a recognizable figure, so you have a sort I hate of that. I un, hate that that's unfair a, that's, advantage. I hate that that's part of the equation. But, you know, you'd have to come out and say, uh, I have two kids. It's an automatic, like, no, no way. Yeah, and exactly. And then you would, you, would, you would have to mention something about your MS. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, yeah, no way. So what would my pictures be? Just me sitting, like, eating with, like, a joint? <laughs> you and those leg things. The leg uh, oh. squeezers that you have at your house. <laughs> the compression pants. Yeah, or you have one kid massaging each foot like they do at your house. That's right. Yeah, and be like, hey, not only are these my kids, but they're helping me. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think you just one video you'd do of fine. Jack being an animal. <laughs> you'd do fine. You'd find a guy. I do um, fine. I, I do not. Uh, I some, would probably have to have an older guy. One girl I was talking to was sending me photo uh, screen caps of the men that she was getting messages from, and like I, I'll complain about the women, but like I think men really have no idea of how to present themselves based yeah. on some of the photos. Um, you know, like if you're a guy and you're holding up like a fish, like. Mm. A lot of guys holding up fish for some provide. Reason. It says I can provide. Yeah, a lot of guys on boats. A lot of, a lot boats. of boats. A lot of boats in general, especially out here in Los Angeles. You would think everyone hikes and then goes home to their boat like <laughs> all day. You know, I know. What are your I pictures? know you're all just at home. What are my pictures? Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, one from the pod? Uh, I had a friend. the one with you sit like perched on the table. <laughs> one of them is in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one was, of you being an asshole. So yeah, no, sitting right here. Um, and then there's. Uh, it's a great picture. A couple of years ago, I had a friend take some nice photos of me and my dog in my backyard. So I have those photos. <laughs> so the uh, sounds super straight. It's, it's so straight, dude. You're looking for only girls on the app. I did. Here's what happened. Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I went into a longish conversation with a transgender person, and without really under understanding, knowing that was the case. I saw a pretty, pretty girl, and um, her name was something, but it had the letters T-S in front of it. Mm. And so I didn't get it. It was like her name was T-S, like Allison or something like that. And I was like, T-S-A? Like, do you work for the... T I asked her if she worked for the T-S-A. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no. I'm like, huh, well, all right. And then... Uh, I was like, hmm. And then I started going through her profile and then I read like on the last sentence, like tra transgender woman. And uh, I said, oh, hey, look, I just read that you're transgender. I think you're beautiful. Uh, but that this is the end of the line for you, me. You could see the background in my first photo. I fully support your whole agenda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, th I thought I had a, a couple misfires and um, for the most part, Everyone seems to be really nice. There seems to be a lot of people on dating apps that are like trying it for the first time. Right. And um, you were mentioning though when you got here that like a date is like a 
a, a, okay, a, so th- this is how it starts. So you start chatting with someone, and then once you get past that first hurdle, then it's like, well, do we should we FaceTime? That's how people kind of. That's the next step they take. So, uh, so f- so it, aggressive. Is that aggressive? Very too fast. Well, not right away. Like I don't, I, I don't generally, you know, it takes. I've, I've got to weed through the conversation. Then first the, he finds out if they're a man or a woman, right, and then right. I'll still Facetime if you're a man, you know, for sure. But like, yeah. you know, physically, I don't think I can be there for you. Um, and mm-hmm. then once you graduate from the Facetime, then there's talk about uh, safely meeting, and right now that is a, what I hear is a distanced walk, masked. Masked Ugh. distance walk Get on, on the beach or like on a hike. That's that's how people are meeting right now. I'm such a loner that I'm like, you people are so pathetic. <laughs> like, I'm like, you guys need fucking. Me too, you guys need by people. The way. You it does, shit. It does feel like a lot of work, you know. And um, for someone who's lonely, I can imagine it sounding very exciting, though. It doesn't. Uh, it, it seems like it seems like Sounds work. Awful. It seems like work, and and uh, but look, how else are you gonna? How else yeah. would you do this? But you know what's so ridiculous? I feel like the first meeting would be like a socially distanced walk, and the second one is like you're fucking with no cond. You know, like that. I just feel like yeah, that's, I, uh, yeah. I haven't got I haven't gotten to that point, so it'd be interesting to see how soon we could get to the no cond. No yeah. con. Well, button the shirt. You down for the no con? I think the, the I higher know, you button your shirt, the better chance you have. What's the deal? Is... A girl still on birth control? Is that still a thing? Look, I had. That's so funny. You say I. I know. I'm not going to name. Everyone him. was on birth control when I was younger. I think some kids today, from what I hear, think. Kids today. I, I, I heard of a couple that were instead of using a condom, mm. they would they would raw dog, but afterwards take a Plan B every time. That's expensive. That's terrible. But it's also, it doesn't work after a while, and it's like bad for your body. Yeah, I was going to say, that's oh, so I'm bad for you. Work. Yeah. After a while. Yeah, <laughs> you can't times? do it too, you can't do it like, they were doing it, I think like four or five times. It'll work every time you do it, it's yeah. the woman. <laughs> I hear it's a baker's dozen. When you get to that, that uh, 14, that's the yeah. magic yeah. number. Yeah. So, I don't Dang. know, dating right now dating is, right now. is it's rough. If you know? anyone's dating right now, write us in. Tell us about it. I want to hear more about it. It's perfect for me because I'm like, I, know. Yeah, I don't have to change much. You don't have to change anything, and you're really not missing much. But you know what? There is a sort of like uh, comfort in knowing that you can't really go do the the full first date experience. You know, get the flowers and go, you yeah. know, and go to a restaurant, try and get reservations. There's that's kind of mm. off the table at the moment, which is kind of nice, you know. So the thought of like, well, we're gonna go on a walk at the beach where we don't really know what we look like because we're gonna be wearing masks, is a, a little annoying, but also kind of um, easy. To do. Yeah. 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 You trying to move on, Jamie? I see no, you looking no, at, I, I see was, you looking no, at the email. I sometimes I do think like when I'm just thinking. No, I wasn't reading the email yet. You're like you're like uh, Terry Winter. Here's the problem. <laughs> Here's the problem I'm having is you're working on the pod all the time. When you have. <laughs> A few conversations open, and um, I've I'm, I've gotten advice to when you don't want to continue to just stop yes. talking. Oh, like ghost them? Well, if yeah, if you haven't met in person, that's rude. I'm I'm being told to ghost. Now I have a very I'm who's like, telling you to ghost? Uh, what do you mean you're being told? He to? knows who he is. I just write what's mo- up, Mark. I write moving on in all caps. Um, there you go. Yeah, I I for the most part say. Look, hey, it's been great chatting with you. I think I found a, a, a spark with somebody else. I just want to be totally transparent. So nice. I hate you should when just people save ghost. that in your notes section so you could just copy and paste it. Oh, yeah. it's a, yeah, I, I have it. It's right. in the text. So he just types um, in sorry and the rest fills in. <laughs> I think I think that's okay to do. I can understand why somebody would be like that. You're fucking wasting your time. Who gives? No one gives a shit. You know, because I don't. I think most people just go, yeah, we understand. We're on a dating app. If you don't want to keep talking, that's fine. But it's a little weird for somebody who's just coming on to these things to hop right in and know all the like uh and and understand all these little nuances that I I don't I just I want to treat people well uh because that's how I would want to be treated mm-hmm. but I don't know I think maybe I'm maybe I'm being too nice dude fuck these bitches yeah you're a snowflake dude gabby do as a girl, would you? I love how I don't dude. Even Gabby know. looks cute today. Let's bring her so on. So cute. I don't even think about Jamie. Gabby, you look cute for a, a change. Let's go. Let's see ya. <laughs> Gabby, as a girl, what do you what do you want a guy to do if he's gonna stop talking to you on an app like that? So you want somebody to actually be upfront. Be upfront. Yeah. Yeah. She said, "Tell her." 
we got it. There's no, yeah, there's there's no sort of, uh, like, that person can quickly move on, and, and there's no, like, oh, man, like, I just think it's an indicative of the type of person that you are. Yeah. I see, I, I wasn't, um, I guess my dating, I wasn't dating a ton at the end of, like, or when, like, really that, that constant texting thing was going on. I don't know, I just feel like I only know one girl who ever, like, ghosted me, and I, and I remember being like, what? Like, why wouldn't you just say, like, especially because she lived, like, a block away from where I always was. And I'm like, I'm yeah. going to see it. That's, yeah. that's so fucking. And I wasn't even, like, I, maybe I understand it even more if I was, like, I'm in love with this girl and this. But, like, we went out on two dates. She was fine. Like, we didn't. Yeah. There was nothing. And then, like, I remember texting her and seeing nothing. And I was like, that's just, like, what a cunt. It's weird. Yeah. You know, here's what I think it is. I think most people. Um, especially now just being in the uh, at the tail end of like 10 months or 11 months of a, a pandemic, most people have below average social skills. And when they are forced into interactions with other people, that stuff comes out and they avoid situations where they have to like actually be a person or like be direct or they want to- How avoid... old are the people you're talking to though? Dude, I'm getting oldies, man. Because I, I think there there's a certain thing that comes with age where you just lose the bullshit and you just are like, time is more precious. And you're like, this yeah. is what I'm looking for. Is it lining up with you? Nope. Okay, cool. See right. you. Like, I guess I'm just thinking for me, like, I, I don't have fucking time for games. I would just be... It would literally be no brainers for me whether like I, I couldn't sit in the wondering of ghosting or worrying about a man like all those things I did in my 20s like with relationships and guys that I was dating like I just I become hardened every day I'm on this app sure. you know to where I'm I'm like giving less of a shit because I understand that's kind of like how everyone is acting on mm -hmm. this and you just focus on the interactions that seem to be going well mm -hmm. or that you're connecting on. Um, a couple weird things happened that I didn't anticipate is like a couple people that I knew from real life, mm. you know, found me on there. So you, I felt like, oh, fuck, I was a little embarrassed. Like, oh shit, they see me on the app, you know, yeah. but also I pay for the premium. So the premium lets <laughs> you see who likes you. You don't have to swipe on a person right away. You'll get a, a whole tab of people that have already swiped you. So in that, That's a nice in that tab, I saw a couple that. people that I knew from real life, and then that sucks for people that might not be able to afford that app part feature. It's fucking That's twenty so thirty dollars. What's wrong with that? What they the have to fuck? make money. Wow. Jamie, how much was your house in Austin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, I'm her. just saying. Like, what the fuck? Life's hard enough, man. But Let people see who likes them. Everyone has the ability to get it. You know, it's an option. I don't like it. I Capitalism. don't like it. So what do I'm you do? I'm gonna make my own app. What do you do with I'm gonna somebody? Make an app. I'm gonna make What's a it gonna nice be called? dating app. Find me. Ooh. Cram me. The Fuck my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Fart Simpson. Um, yeah, I don't like it. Not not into it. Not liking how things are being run. Kasim, have you thought about how many people saw you who you know and didn't? Yes. <laughs> Swipe the right I'm way. Glad, but I'm thankful for it, you know, because it's like I I do that. I saw a couple people that I know, and I and I am like Ooh, that this liked would... you. No, no, not oh. that I that I didn't uh, like or they didn't like me yet. But you sometimes can swipe. You know, sometimes you'll swipe, and then I was like, ooh, I know that person. Oh, she's divorced now. Ooh. And then, then you, then I started thinking divorced. about my buddy, you know. And then I was <laughs> what like, the fuck "Oh was man, that? we're not glossing over that." What's oh, it? she's oh. divorced and have, has MS. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? No, I I came across a girl I knew who I st I haven't seen in a while, but I thought she's she's married, and I know her husband well. And I was like, "Oh, I guess they're divorced." That's you know? not how you just said it. It's not what he said. What did I say? Ooh. Yuck. Oh, I said ich? Yeah, yeah, I think you okay. spit on the rewind, floor. Rewind the tape. Oh, sure. I, I'm sure I did, but I'm saying ich because I don't want that awkward interaction of like- You don't want someone else's trash? No. Uh, yeah. But like, I also don't, the, the ones that swiped me that are my friends, I'm like, sure, you could be very cute. And like, if I didn't really know who you were or you weren't friends with like my exes or other friends, there could be something here, but I, uh, no. Some of your ex's friends are swiping you? 
I saw. I see. This is what society yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. happened once. Casim Casim's afraid to be the real cast. Like he's Mister. Like I'm deleting videos and I'm really nice to these girls. I'm not. But then when he's home in his head, he's like, Ugh. you know, yeah. he's like Divo divorce. Divorce. Yeah. Here's what Garbage. I will. Say. Here's what Ugh. I will say. He said he doesn't want someone else's trash. That's a horrible thing to say. Terrible. I'm sure a girl has come across my profile and made that exact same sound. Ugh. And I could guarantee it. The, guarantee it. <laughs> and I am allowed that same right to my. To and she's me. like, I'm paying premium for this shit. Yeah. Um, this motherfucker liked me. Look, I, I don't know if it's going to be successful or not. It's just a, it's an experience that I haven't ever had, and I'm giving it a Good shot. For you. And if you're going to try and meet somebody, this is, I think, the only and best way to meet because it's just opening. going to masked walk. The masked walker. The we masked should have a reality walker. show. Yes. <laughs> Who is this? Yeah. Um, Who are we going on a masked walk with today? Yeah. So across the not street sexy. in like Venice, like yeah. Abbot Kinney's like the perfect distance for you guys to just talk across the street. Here's the other thing. Hi. How they're when you do FaceTime them, what they look like on that FaceTime versus the the photos presented. Oh, now I'm huge yeah. chasm wow. between the two. A lot, a big divide between yes. how people present on photos. So you kind of have to do the FaceTime and uh, and figure out. Have like, you ever been like, hey, ooh, gotta oh oh shoot, I sorry, my mom's calling, I gotta go. I have never done that on the phone, <laughs> but like. After I hung up, I was like, well, you know, I think that one's not going to work. What's the shortest FaceTime you've had? I've only had like two or three. And Some girl hung up on him in it? three seconds. <laughs> they, they, they've lasted like 30-ish. Oh, okay. Minutes? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, Are but, you always but the I'm one not that saying ends that's the combo? It went. I'm not saying because it went well. It's because like I don't- You never shut up. I don't have the <laughs> guts to like, to be like- yeah, nothing here, you know? I, I just kind of let the conversation... Uh, and wait for a lull to be like, all right. Wait for a lull, yeah. See, and then you're like, I'll be in touch or like... Yeah, you gotta, you know, it's weird. You I can... don't know why. I need like every detail of this whole you, thing. I feel like if you were doing, if you were talking to a dude, you would have no problem being like, all right, I'm gonna go, but it's a chick and you won't, you were, yeah. you, you'll let it go 30 minutes before you're like, all right. Dude, mo and I'll tell you, uh, mo the two out of the three went like almost an hour. Jesus. Yeah. Christ, what are you, are you, are you like preparing He's bits? <laughs> one chick, one chick looked at me uh, and creamed. she was like, yeah, I don't know what it is, but you just look miserable. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, and then I, I, I Did caught myself. Uh, I caught myself. I looked at my fa picture on the FaceTime. I'm like, yeah, I do look, <laughs> I do look miserable. And then 40 minutes later, he's like, I can't end this. Yeah, yeah. Then I had yeah. to do another 30 it's my minutes. Dream girl. Yeah, like, what? she's like, yeah, you look miserable, like unhappy. I was like, Ugh. wow, what a thing to say. If you only knew. Did you tell your kick in caffeine? I don't. <laughs> I'm back. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm back on the caffeine. I, uh, yeah, I for. I had to take that as like information because mm -hmm. I don't. I'm I'm a in person guy. Mm -hmm. I, I think on Facetime I have a tough time. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. It was a. This is all so new to me, but I'm glad to be. I'm out there. I really want to be more involved in this. I think part you need to life. do more pretending on the outside and less on the inside. Huh? What's a pretending on the inside? You mean? No, of just like when you see a girl on a Facetime. And, and you're like, call uh, it faster. And, and you're like, ugh. But then you put in 45 minutes where, like, you, you know yeah, what I mean? You know it's what like part just... of it is? Is like during that 30, 45 minutes, I'm hoping like the lighting catches her in the right way, you know? <laughs> right. So, like, I'm just doing a little bit of research, you know? You I'm think like, maybe she's Gabby in her TikTok like... <laughs> trans transformation videos? I'm like, hey, uh, why don't you do a, a lap around your house and let me see how different lighting looks on you? Yeah. Is that a shadow or are is you your a, nose that do big? You, do you walk around when you're on FaceTime or do you sit in one place the whole time? Uh, I sit in one place and then um, if if I feel like it, I need to get up and move, I'll, I'll get up and move. But, <laughs> yeah. you have a sky I have light? a ring light. I have a whole thing. Oh you my put God. on a ring light for your FaceTime? I have one for my <gasps> Zoom meetings. Oh my <laughs> God. We're doing, oh, dude. We're doing another hour. <laughs> I have a light. My face you needs wear light. You put on a ring light? I would argue it Whoa. needs less darkness. No, I need to like cover. Oh my God. I need Let's a hear flat. it. So, I don't even do ring lights for my self tapes. And let me tell you something. You know why you haven't met any of these girls yet? Because in the reflection of your eyes, they see your ring yes. light and they're like, this dude is not a dude. You think that's it, huh? 
Yeah. Like, this is what's screwing me over. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's a it's enough. Like you don't need because then you're making a whole other layer to things, right? It's like you say, mm -hmm. here we go. Oh, this is good. You, oh, you say, think you just stumbled across yeah, something? I gotta pee. How long is this gonna take? Not long. Great. You say, man, when you meet these girls, or when you see the girls on the app. You have to go the next level and see them on FaceTime because they look different. But the girls who meet you are going to go, hey, when you see these guys on the app, you not only have to FaceTime them, but you have to meet them in person because this guy looks like a stud with his ring light. Oh, you're saying I look too good with the ring light. You're yes, well, that's you're what a ring light Thank is. You. Yeah. God forbid I'm fucking setting myself up for success. What do you want me to do, guys? Well, then quit complaining that they don't look the same. You vain no, piece of shit. No, I'm not shit. saying about... I'm... I'm all <laughs> I need somebody to put in the same amount of effort. I talked to some chick who was in the dark in so her car. So when you car. go on your distance walks, do you have like a little like thing with a it. light no, following you? No, I haven't you? done it. Oh it smooths your complexion. How dare you, dude? I don't, I, dude. You need to sympathize. You need to be do, trying this. You'll I understand. Have to pee. I've, right I've done it. What are you talking about? No mag light. What are they called? Spotlights. Ring <laughs> no ring, ring lights light. for me, dude. <sighs> what a fucking. Oof. I'd love to see Rob in a ring. Dude, you've got a great face. Why Jamie, not? you're married. I don't want to. <laughs> dude, let's prank. Let's prank Jamie, dude. Let's put a fucking dildo on her chair and see if she sits all the way on it. Oh, I thought you were gonna say turn these lights off and show her what you really look like. <laughs> I th here's my For deal. Once, with Jamie the thinks light, you actually look like this. With the ring light, I want them to see how I look. I don't want to be no. trapped in the shadow. What That's do you what mean, the no? sun is for, dude. So you want me to keep up a lie until we're going on a walk in daylight? No, you're keeping up. The lie is the ring light. The the ring light is only sh showing what's what. No, my face Jamie is said like. it smooths your complexion. That's what ring lights do. No. Oh, you mean like like a filter would? No, 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 no. It only makes it so you can see my pores and my. I don't have a filter. Or it doesn't. See, no. now we're not ending this pod. You're still going, right? Okay, yeah, but well, Jamie has to come back in and we need to get to the bottom of this. Gabby, do ring lights don't just show what you look like. They they make you look better. It's not no, a filter. No, of course it's not a filter, but it makes you look better. Yeah. 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 But like, why do we use oh, a- Oh, depth. You're, you're a depth losing benefiter. <laughs> I need- <laughs> I lose about an inch on this nose. Yeah, you benefit greatly from some depth. Come on, dude. What, what, look, dude, we use lights on this show because we want to. We want people to see the show. This is a show. And that, and so is online dating, dude. Oh my so god, man! Dating. See this. This is and this Thank is why. You. This, and this is why you're never gonna find the woman to have. This is why your biggest fear. It will come true if I, you keep this up. I think no. I think I'm. I need to be completely transparent in how I present myself. If I'm hiding in the dark, that to me is a sign of like I'm afraid of showing you who I am. Jamie, he says. Did you says, make your peepees? He made a peepee. He thought because I didn't know what a ring light was that he can get away with some shit while you were gone. He said the reason he uses the ring light is to show his face, and and you no. said it makes you look better. Yeah, it clears your complexion. Yes. Do you want to see a picture of me in a ring light? I. I don't know. I think you're we're a both fraud. right here, You're lying dude. to yourself. No, I'm never a guy that, if you ever looked at my Instagram, I've never used like a filter on my face to smooth it out. I don't do that. I don't you're care. You're lying to yourself, I got man. This is my face. Look at it. I'm not afraid of it. Oh, I think you're a handsome guy. I'm just saying you're lying to Thank these poor- Thank you, dude. How many episodes did that take? You're lying. What episode is this? You're oh, lying to these poor sweet. girls. You know you're handsome. You're lying to these girls, and you're the reason online dating will never be a I'm success. I'm find you a real will never, the, Nobody will ever make money like off of that. call me handsome and See, look how far back I have to go husband. to find a, me in a ring light. All right, let's wrap this up. Whatever. Look, uh, I want to keep. I want to keep. I'll update you guys on uh, my progress. I want a weekly update. I think maybe it should be the opening segment or a little after commercial break thing. Yeah, hopefully this. Hopefully that segment doesn't last longer than a few weeks, or else I don't think I can keep what doing do you mean? this. We could take it through the whole relationship. On su listen, on Sunday we're that's not a bad idea. On Sunday for your new pod. Mm. On Sunday, we were hanging out. What did he do? He was on Bumble all the whole yeah. time. That's before. Yeah, Bo felt that's really before ignored. I, come on, I I worked with I Bo on do. his you comic do. books. The only only thing I did. I love the by the way, like the more we come over, the more comfortable everyone gets, and I love it. You yes. see, like you disappeared for like three hours on your phone when you got stoned. You were just I like did? peace, but yeah. it was great. It's like kids oh, were in is... the pool. You were stoned. <laughs> Where did I? I don't even remember this. On, on the couch. When, remember we were uh, we were watching the fight, and you were just like 
You you were zo- you were on your fo- you were because like I know oh, because I like didn't go to another room. No no no, you oh. were right. No, it's even better. Like you were right yes. there, like yes. amongst us, but you just disappeared onto your phone. And yes. I remember because like you're such a I don't know what the way to say, but it's like you're so supportive to me that like <laughs> we're talking back and forth for like thirty minutes, and I said something, and you were like <laughs> you were like yeah he's you're you uh huh Rob like you know just like you. <laughs> I had no idea what you guys were talking about. Yeah, and about. I knew. I was like, she doesn't know. She just wants to like be on my side. It was so sweet. I was like, oh, love you, Amy Lee. Love you. Well, that's an episode. Uh, look, we uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching on YouTube, click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. That way yes. you know when our videos go up, which is every Tuesday morning. Tuesday. And we have an Instagram and uh, Twitter. And me and Jamie have Instagrams. And we have a subreddit, r slash pajama pants podcast. And if you uh, want to send us an email... Uh, ask pajama pants at gmail.com and we have a uh, P.O. box which we can put in the uh, description there and yeah that's it we appreciate you guys watching onwards and upwards onwards and upwards as George would say